What is printing people? Welcome back to Custom 3D. This is the Elegoo Neptune, and it is the main reason why you should not buy a Prusa Mark III S. So before we jump into today's video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm gonna tell you all about this Elegoo Neptune and how great of a machine it is. Now I know Uncle Jesse, who's a pretty successful 3D printing YouTuber, absolutely loves this machine, and I can definitely see why. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. So the Elegoo Neptune comes about 90% pre-assembled, uh, very similarly packaged, to Ender 3 like printers like the Voxelab as well. Uh, some features it gets is it has a PEI magnetic build sheet, upgraded leveling uh, wheels, a filament runout sensor, resume print uh, function after power loss, um, and a silent motherboard. So let's go over some similarities between these two machines. First of all, let's start off with price, which isn't very similar. Uh, this comes in a kit, the Prusa Mark III, for $750. It's more like $800 plus shipping, taxes, and then you're gonna wait probably a month to get the printer uh, because they're, they make them in-house and that's just their capabilities. I bought this printer on sale for like $230. Uh, usually it's priced around $300, the Elegoo Neptune. Uh, so obviously massive price difference. So the main reason why I think somebody buys a Prusa is because it's got a really good track record. A lot of people, especially a lot of memorable people within the 3D printing sphere uh, love this machine. Uh, it's got a lot of following, a lot of, you know, you can go on prusaprinters.com and there's a lot of feedback on this printer. You can basically fix any issues by going on that machine. But this printer is also getting that sort of cult following. Uh, just like the Ender 3, I think anybody who likes the Ender 3 will like this printer. Uncle Jesse, like I said, loves this machine. Uh, and honestly, this machine is totally worth the price and makes this machine outdated and overpriced. So let's go over uh, the, first of all, the extruder setup. This is a direct drive setup on the Prusa, um, all metal hot end. This is not an all metal hot end. This is a Bowden setup. But while uh, you can print quicker on this, this one's a little bit slower, depends on your speeds and your settings, but uh, the Bowden setup allows for faster printing uh, just because the lighter setup. Uh, this does have uh, dual uh, gears uh, for the extruder arm. Uh, it's all metal as well, which is a plus with an upgraded spring too, so it, extra durability. Filament runout sensor. Now it's funny, the filament runout sensor broke on this and I had to remove it, uh, which sucks. But uh, a lot of things have gone wrong with this printer. Uh, as you can see here, the shooter wobbles a little bit. That's because the 3D printed part in there broke, so I'm gonna have to fix that and uh, make it a little bit more stronger because that's not good to have the extra wobble like that. Um, something that's pretty amazing is this comes with a flexible steel sheet um, and so does this one. This one comes with a PEI coated. Uh, it's not as thick of a sheet, but I've had no issues with sticking. Uh, the only thing is, is PETG seems to stick a little bit too well to this. I think the texture plate is a little bit uh, not as strong as it is on this one. So, and it's, it's a little like the, like the, the sheet is just a little bit too finely ground. So the P, the PETG really sticks to it. So you have to really pick at it to get it off. Something that I don't like is that there's really nothing to help you guide the sheet on. You know, if there was like two tabs, like what's on the Prusa in the back here to help you stick it on, that would be nice. But you also get these upgraded wheels, which is really nice because with the plastic wheels, they really turn a lot when you're printing uh, just because they're not of high quality and they have the upgraded spring as well. You'll see that has a 40 millimeter extruded aluminum uh, arm here. 
uh, for extra stability. Uh, it comes with this Bowden with this Capricorn tubing as well. Uh, and the setup, the hot incentive is exactly like a Creality setup, which I love. Uh, like I said, filament runout detection uh, and a touchscreen interface. Now, this isn't the most intuitive touchscreen interface. Uh, like when you have to preheat, you have to, like there's no dial to turn. So it's really slow, you have to tap and you do it every 10 degrees. I wish that there was just a preset setting. I don't know if there is. I haven't had the printer that long, but I'll see if I can find it. Um, but yeah, it's a really good machine, quiet. It only has one lead screw, which is okay. It works fine. Um, but like I've said in the past, this printer is just overkill. Uh, it has a lot of features which are nice, but dual lead rods, dual lead screws for this smaller printer, like I've said in the past, isn't really necessary. This gets away with one, and I've printed some tall items like this lightsaber, um, which is pretty tall for this printer, and it has no issues with it. You know, you'll see no, no layer shifts or wobbles here, maybe just a little bit of stringing, but that's it, and it came out great. It works. Um, and another thing, I wish that these printers would now start going to full-sized SD cards. Uh, it's just easier to work with, and you know, eventually you'll end up breaking those just because they're so small with the micro SD. But you guys know my opinion on the Prusa. If you've watched my channel in the past, you'll know that I was insanely excited to get this printer, and then just disappointed with the performance, the reliability for the price point. You know, when you spend a thousand dollars on something, you want it to be almost perfect, especially for this build volume. Uh, the build volumes are very similar. Uh, this actually might be like uh, 10 millimeters taller in build volume. Um, but uh, yeah, this printer is the reason why you shouldn't buy a Prusa Mark III S Plus. Uh, that's my recommendation. Even if you have the money to buy this printer, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it anymore. Maybe when it first came out, but not anymore, especially with this printer. Uh, just an uh, amazing machine. And I hope that they might eventually come out with like a version where it does have the dual lead screws. Uh, not lead rods, but the lead screws would be nice. Um, just, just like the new Ender 3 S1, uh, that would be pretty sweet. But for the price point, you really can't beat it. $300, this machine is perfect. Uh, this is my number one recommended printer right now. Whenever anybody emails me and asks me, hey, what kind of printer should I buy? Buy this. Uh, so that's gonna conclude today's video. Um, and yeah. So that's gonna conclude today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope this helped you. If you're looking to buy either of these printers, uh, in your search. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video to all your friends, and make sure to check out all the links in the description below. Thanks guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.